after months since the last Bricklink haul, we are back with another one. And this one's gonna be really, really handy for the mock that I'm working on with the AV7 turret, with the AAT that is still in the works. And hopefully this will save so many bricks that we can put to the actual foundation and the surrounding of the mock. So without further ado, let's see what I've bought. Actually, the first thing in this order has nothing to do with that mock. And I'll explain why I've bought the Nightmare King, I believe, from Dreams. He was in a magazine not too long ago, but the magazine cost six, seven odd pound. It's definitely between that five and eight pound mark. I think it was one of the more pricey ones because of the extra pieces and the bigger molds that come with this character. He does come with his weapon, but I got this minifigure for something like three, four pound, I think it was. I have all the seller's details on screen. If you did want to check out what else they have, I'm grateful they had all these pieces. It come in really good condition for what I believe was a new figure. But the reason I have got the Nightmare King isn't actually to do with the minifigure at all. And is rather to do with that exclusive cape piece. Whilst we're at it, it is a really good minifigure. I like the crown on the helmet and it definitely reminds me of Sauron with the spikes it's got the same hood as Emperor and is really made from all your worst nightmares but this cape piece is I didn't realize until recently a rubber cape piece when it originally came out I just assumed it was material like most of the capes and when you look at it you can really tell it's not material there is no way Lego could have done this as a material piece just look at all those details. You've got the bat wings at the top. Now that I'm seeing this up close, that looks like a dragon head down the bottom. Actually, there's two of them. There's that one on that side and there's one on the other side as well. And there's a few different, maybe that's an arm or a wing. It does look really, really cool, but this is a rubber piece. So it is quite flexible and I'm really liking this style of cape. There are currently two other minifigures that share this rubber cape that are in my collection. And first off, we do have Doctor Strange, who I believe introduced the whole rubber cape. And I really like it because the cape is basically its own character. I think I've said that on the channel before, and it makes it so easy to slide the cape on and off. And especially with, let me get one of the non rubber capes from my Star Wars collection. This will be perhaps the both best and worst example because of the material. This is the thinner material of capes. and. There is a reason why it's not very popular in the LEGO Star Wars community at least. Look at them holes in the cape. I don't know if you can tell how many capes you've used. Them holes are like one and a half times the size they should be. This is a very weak material. It's the flimsy one that honestly I prefer for the look and feel of them and they're a lot easier to use in mocks. But they're also a lot easier to stretch. It's not even when I've been putting it on and off because I tend not to stretch my capes like that because it holds it a lot better around the neck. But just over time, these capes are gonna wear down. Unlike these rubber ones, I'm not sure if Batman's can be classed as a cape. It's a whole cowl and cape. This whole element is one. And I've actually seen a handful of people now complaining across YouTube, Instagram, and Reddit that their cape came molded the wrong way. So their cape was actually pointing upwards, which was really funny to see. One of them got folded because it was sealed in the paper bag and the others just seemed to be made that way. So I'm not quite sure if there's any other issues with the rubber capes, but I think these three are really cool and I cannot wait to pick up the rest. But I'm sure you didn't come here to see the capes. You wanna know what else I got from this Bricklink haul. So let's get these out of the way and introduce bag number one, which just has a few brick elements, but this will be the easiest to explain the rest of the haul. There are three different bricks in here. I'm not sure if you can tell on camera, but there's definitely a difference to the Lego color. I think this is one lot, this is another lot, and we will see how correct I am in a minute but we've got some very old bricks. These were used condition, and I do have to put a disclaimer on the screen that these all cost me about two pence per brick in the end, and that includes whacking the new ones in with them as well, which I know is not the deal of a lifetime, 
but it's a pretty good deal at that. And when I want so many of them, they had quite a few available in this store. There's more in a minute. It's definitely worth picking up. You can see on the inside, they are in fact, you don't even see the Lego model. It says P-A-T-P-E-N-D, and that stands for Patent Pending. This is before Lego owned the patent of the Lego bricks. These bricks are over 70 years old and are the original Lego bricks, which I think is really, really cool. They do also have what seems to be a copyright logo, so they must have had the copyright for them, but not the patent. I really don't know how that works, but you can see the Lego logo on the stud. This isn't some test product. These are official Legos that were put into set 70 years ago, and I think they're definitely a bit scruffy. You can see there's a bit of playwear on the side. But the quality of these for surviving over 70 years really shows just how long Lego bricks can stay around for. And it's not just these ones, but it's the exact same with these yellow ones as well. And I was splitting the yellow ones into two different piles because these are the old ones. I don't know if I can show you the patent pending. It doesn't actually seem that there's anything written inside of the yellow ones, but they are a slight different color to the new Lego yellow that they use in the modern sets. The top one is the new one, the bottom is the old, and it's a lot brighter. I don't know if that's because of over time the color has dulled. I don't know exactly how these bricks work out, but it's really cool that I have another piece of history that's come from another Bricklink order. This is now the oldest Lego I have in my collection and these four were, I mean, they weren't listed as good condition, but I think for 70 years worth, they are pretty good condition and there are a few more. In fact, I have a whole bag full of these and as you can see, they were listed as terrible condition just to get a few of these out. They, they're not terrible, but they're definitely a little worse than the other ones and you can see what I mean, there are scratches and dents all over them. But at the end of the day, because it's a two by four brick, we're not looking at any scratches on unique printed parts. I just think they're bad condition. They're not terrible. They're a bit dirty here and there, but they're gonna be concealed on the mock. This is purely just for Mills plate. So I really don't mind about all of the scruffs. And there's a load of different markings. This isn't exactly dirt. This is some sort of I don't know, some material that's been left around when it's been battered and bruised during 70 years of play. I just think it's amazing that these Lego bricks have held up so long. So this is my Bricklink order. This is everything I ordered, but I'm not gonna leave it there and make you wait to see what these bricks are gonna be used for because we're gonna go over and put them on my display right now. We're back with another time-lapse, and first off, I built this duck for the thumbnail out of the bricks, but we do have to break this down. I'm pretty sure these bricks are meant to fill up the majority of this great base plate. So I got one of the two by fours from my collection and use that to space out these bricks so that they can each hold six by six plates. Now, I'm not sure I own six by six plates in the right color I wanna use for this mock, but I definitely own more six by six plates than any other plate, and definitely a lot more than the four by fours. And I can always switch these up, add a few extra bricks if I use some four by sixes, two by sixes. I've just got so many of all of them that it's definitely enough to fill this. And funnily enough, I almost had enough two by two bricks to fill this entire base plate. There was a little mishap with the two by four, so it's good that I got it. I only needed two more, which I ended up getting from my personal collection. This is every single two by four in yellow that I own. And you can definitely see a little bit of the color difference when these are all plated down. But I thought I'd use mine on the yellow plate. And the reason I'm using yellow plates is, or yellow bricks, is because these are the highest quantity of bricks that I own. Typically, you want to go with red or yellow, something that's pretty cheap to get your hands on, comes a lot in the creative boxes, and also isn't an important color like green, which we'll need next door for the Minecraft terrain of the world we are going to be working on eventually. We were one brick away. One brick, one brick out of all of them. I'm surprised actually at just how far this Bricklink order went. I didn't think we'd have enough to fill up the gray base plate. And I don't really know why. We were only 
too short at the back there. So I use parts from my own. Technically, we can take one of these and whack it just on the corner here just to complete that because I had enough bricks to do the yellow base plate and I did find an extra two as well that were attached to a column of red, which was a very nice surprise. We only need one more two by two to complete it. I might end up, if I can't find a yellow one, using a different color or I could always pop next door and steal one from the actual little house. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that, but if I need to, there are other bricks available. I can always use a two by two or another one of them corner bricks with a one by one or stack up four plates. There are so many different ways of creating a two by two. So I'll probably end up doing something like that. So that is everything for today's brick link haul. I'm very happy to finally be going somewhere with the actual base of that mark. It's slow, it's steady, but at least it's progress. And I'm happy to finally have the Nightmare King in my collection. Again, once I pick up the other rubber capes that are coming out, I think there's one on Loki, one on Batman, one on Thor. Let me know any other rubber capes or even rubber elements I might look into in the comments if you do know if there are any more. I guess there are a load of rubber elements. Perhaps we can stick to rubber capes. But I should be getting Loki next month. I think Batman in a month or two and Thor and Serta. I do want to pick up that set. You might have seen it creep into the poll for the Sunday review set. I'm probably going to include it the next few weeks unless I see it on sale and buy it sooner. It's up to you if you do want to see that set, of course. And plenty of other reviews this week. We've got the Planet series, which you did vote for last week. And I don't really know what I'm going to put up to vote this week. So stay tuned. Definitely watch the review to find out. And thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. May the bricks be with you always.